So wait, was this during a time, like like when you're telling these El Chapo jokes, was this during a time when it was pop, he was like on the loose, he's broken out of prison? It's possible as a baller and a Mexican national, he's in that audience. Dude, not only was it possible, he had been seen in Cabo, uh, in, listen, in one of the developments on the grounds of Esperanza, man. Like he was... <laughs> And they got there, and it was like, no, dude, he just slept. You know, it was like <laughs> always the case with us. No, he was here like 10 minutes ago. And we're live. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. Got a special guest tonight. We've got our, our new friend, John Henson, uh, oh. comedian, host extraordinaire, and, appa and apparently one of the most professional vacationers on the planet. <laughs> Sounds like dude, uh, figured out vacationing. Yeah, man. If I, could, uh, if I could go vacationing full time, I'd be on it, man. So explain that gig you were explaining to okay. us. You, 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 or is, are you willing to? T I, I kind of just yeah, threw it no, out there. That was kind of a private conversation we had. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Tell us about the money you made. <laughs> it's not shady. So for for about six years now, my wife and I have been working with an orphanage in Cabo San Lucas, helping them raise money. Right. I have a uh, I have a sister in law who uh, works at five star resorts in Cabo. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys. I tell people this all the time. If you ever get the chance to marry into a family where someone works at a five-star resort, you learn to love them. Do you understand? <laughs> you make that shit work. Now, uh, we, as a result, we got to spend a ton of time at uh, this beautiful resort in Cabo San Lucas called Esperanza. It's this gorgeous five-star resort down there. And, uh, and we got to spend all this time down there and, and develop some relationships. We got to know the people at this uh, orphanage. And I started going down and hosting these fundraisers. And it's, a, it's an amazing experience. The kids are there. Um, you know, I, I'm sort of partial to kids' charities. You know, anytime you're connecting a face with the actual cause and their children, you know, it's hard not to get invested. So uh, we go down there, and in a span of like an hour, hour and a half, we'll raise half a million dollars. I mean, it's serious, serious money. It's a, uh, you know, maybe 150, 200 people at this event. And, uh, and, you know, there, there are moments where like a dude will raise a paddle and give a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And, um, it's pretty, it's, it's a pretty inspirational experience. And, um, so, uh, this year we were down there and, uh, the guy that underwrites the event, uh, is this awesome guy, this older guy. And I, at one point I go, um, Hey, uh, uh, you know, I just wanted to tell you, Mr. Peterson, I'm so humbled by your generosity. And he, he goes, uh, yeah, you know, it's just good to be rich. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what a great attitude. <laughs> and uh, so uh, the event went really well. And, the, and then the next day I got it. And my wife and I were hanging out. And, and, and like, they, you know, the people that organize this event are really nice. They give us like four or five days down there in a really nice hotel. So just that, you know, I worked for an hour call it fundraising or charity work and then i spend four days on the beach with my fat ass in the sun so what would um, happen if you turn this fundraising superpower you have inward right if you held a john henson fundraiser like call it your beer fund i don't no. care even if it did half as well that's a quarter million dollars like yeah no it's uh like apparently what i what i need to do is do a stunning impression of a Mexican four-year-old because mm. those kids really <laughs> jerk the tear string, uh, the, the heart strings, you know? So gets no assistance from the Mexican government. They exist entirely on the generosity of donors. And they're in Mexico, it's a very weird audience. There are a lot of wealthy Mexican nationals. And then there are a lot of like wealthy expat, Americans are not even expats, but just people who have like a third or fourth or fifth home in Cabo. And if you have like a fourth home that costs five or ten million dollars, you're balling. You know what so, I mean? And uh, yeah. here's what so, I want to know about the, the, the show you're doing down there. Are, are you going to do your pull out, roll out the Trump jokes? Is this the right audience for that down south dude, of the border? It's interesting. I mean, it's they, this year, like, first of all, I'm not a political comic, but this year the the uh, the the event organizers pulled me aside and they're like, "Do not do any political humor at all," because 
<laughs> because the the you know the audience like you're losing half your audience. The wealthy Mexican nationals obviously hate the idea of the wall, and you know he you know they feel like he's been very uh, derogatory towards Mexicans. And then of course, you know, odds are if you're a person who has five homes and your and your fifth one costs ten million, you might be a Republican. So you know. You know, it's just dicey. And uh, last year, w not this past year, but the year before, I did a bunch of uh, El Chapo jokes, you know? Mm. And because, uh, like, he <laughs> should that go over this, well? Bold dude, move. You could hear, like, you could just <laughs> feel the collective asshole of the room tight. Like, everybody's, oh! I, I, and it was, you know, he had just escaped from prison and, uh, Oh, Woody's coughing up a lung. Um, but I muted it, and, so the audience has no idea. So wait, was this during a time, like like when you're telling these El Chapo jokes, was this during a time when it was pop? He was like on the loose. He's broken out of prison. It's possible as a baller and a Mexican national, he's in that audience. Dude, not only <laughs> was it possible, he had been seen in Cabo, oh. in, listen, in one of the developments on the grounds of Esperanza, man. Like he, was, <laughs> and they got there, and it was like, no, dude, he just slept. You know, it was like always the case with us. No, he was here like ten minutes ago. So you know, and of course, like this was like when he had broken out through the toilet. You know what I mean? And I was like, dude, you got like. He broke. He rode a motorcycle out of the toilet like that. You know what? I can't flush a tampon. This guy got a <laughs> down the fucking toilet. You know, um, but uh, but so uh, like that alone made people. You know, I was like, come on, get it together, Mexico. This year they were like, no, no jokes. So I just worked the room and stuff. And I mean, it's a very very generous audience. And then the day after, I get this email from uh, a guy that introduced himself as the Peterson's house manager. And he said, oh. uh, the Peterson's have requested your presence for dinner this evening. We'll send a car for you at five. And, uh, and so my wife and I were like, oh, there's it. And so we went to dinner with these guys. Super, super nice people. They, they had like, you know, some of their kids there and kids relatives and, you know, they were all around our age. We had a great dinner. And then this guy just goes, uh, my wife and I are so appreciative of the work you've done. We wanted to offer you the use of our estate in Aspen for a week as a way of uh, the saying. The estate in Aspen, eh? I was <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. And uh, so, uh, so that was nuts. Um, and then... Uh, uh, Steve Hofstetter, who uh, you guys know, a uh, mm -hmm. good friend, mutual friend of ours. Uh, I had, uh, there was a, another charity in Cabo that had asked me to host their fundraiser, but it was too close to the date of Casa Hogar, this orphanage that I do. And so Casa Hogar was like two, two fundraisers in a small town, you know, on two consecutive nights, we'd like you to pass up on it. So uh, I booked Hofstetter. And uh, I dropped by that, and the woman that was hosting that fundraiser was like uh, the Mexican Joan Collins. Like, she was just this fabulous, wow. wealthy Mexican woman. What a great description. Go on. Dude, the house, <laughs> it was like walking into Architectural Digest magazine. It was sick. You got to ask Steve about it. It was, it was like just walking into the, her, her entryway was like this open air atrium with a fountain. It was like, you live like this? And uh, so we were talking to him for a little while and this lady was having a good time talking to my wife and she goes, you guys are so nice. Thank you so much for introducing us to Steve and getting him to host for us. You'll have to come down and spend a week at one of my resorts. Uh, yeah, see, see, all right, I'm catching on to you, because Mr. Shields. Henson. I see this. I bet you've been conditioned like a <laughs> uh, uh, uh sort of thing at this point. You're watching TV, flipping through the channels. You see those orphans come on. You immediately get so happy. You're like, oh, I'm this glad that's your, out there somewhere. You're not trying to play it off. You're trying to play it off like you're just Mr. Beaning and falling ass backwards into these <laughs> vacations. Now, these are calculated maneuvers. Am I going to do the show at the Ice House, or am I going to go to the, you know, fucking yeah. Ritz? in Hawaii. Yeah, honey, honey, you know there's a do. tsunami. Another one. Come here, quick. <laughs> Why? You ever been to the South Pacific? The, why did they go into the entertainment industry? There's no money in the entertainment industry. <laughs> philanthropy. It's all in philanthropy. So, uh, so then we got home from, uh, from this uh, whole trip and, uh, and then I got a phone call from uh, the GM of Esperanza 
And he was like, hey, we really enjoyed your show. Would you like to come back and spend a week? We got a, a villa put aside for you and your family, and you could do a few shows down here. So, you know, there's, there's one sort of like, yeah, sure, I'd love to host your fundraiser. It's turned into like three three weeks of vacation. It's crazy. What did they I feel out? like people that they... hate rich people just don't know enough of them. They're fantastic. Oh, yeah, I've you never know. had a bad night hanging out with rich people. It's glorious. They're very I gotta sweet. I got to tell you, man, the, mo- the people with money down there feel, to me, very different than the people with money in L.A. Like, it's... In L.A., wealthy people kind of want you at arm's reach. They want to be a little removed and a little cloistered. In Cabo... I kind of felt like everybody is sort of on permanent vacation and, and the people that had a ton of money were just in this kind of like, yeah, man, it's awesome. I got some money. You want to do something fun? Like it, it, this woman that was uh, hosting the Mexican Joan Collins, when I, when I, uh, when I said, well, we're going to have to leave now, they were having a plated dinner and Steve was going to perform. They were going to do their fundraiser and my wife and I were going to scoot out. I go, we're, we're going to leave. We're going to meet some friends for dinner. And she goes, why? You can't leave. Where are they? Go, I'll send a car for them right now. I'll send my driver. Like, it was just like, oh, you're just, you're just throwing money around. Like, <laughs> I'll send my driver, bring them here. It was crazy. To be fair, though, how much does sending a driver cost there compared to one in L.A.? Oh, right? That might not like, be a variable point. cost for her, right? She might yeah, have the driver better. just there all the time. It doesn't cost her extra to send She's a constant taxi yeah. running. Yeah, yeah. She just... <laughs> That's yeah. a good point, too. The driver yeah, was waiting I, out there for her, and, you know. I've You're never like, oh, seen somebody do, like, the, the $100,000. That's fucking job. <laughs> like, I, I feel like no matter how you see the $100,000 card you're talking about, of like, oh, throw 150 Like, my first response would be like, oh, fuck you. Like, that is so much money. And then my other response is like, uh, fuck you the other way, because you just threw up 150 no problem. Why don't you really see when it hurts? You know, throw up 400 or, Is that smile still as big? Did you get your, your, your vindication there, or is that a little too much? You know? you know, it's funny, man. It's a, you could tell. Every, first of all, I always encourage everybody to get drunk at a fundraiser, as I, as I call it, liquid generosity. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You get a few cocktails in you, and suddenly you're like, you know what? And then the next morning, yeah. oh my god, the casino what concept. But uh, dude, my wife got a few glasses of wine in her, and she was bidding on a three day stay at the one and only Palmia, which is another five-star resort down in Cabo. It's actually where we had our first date 10 years ago. Excuse me. And uh, it was uh, kind of funny because I'm hosting, like I'm doing the the auction and my wife is bidding and part of me is like, oh Jesus, please God, somebody outbid my wife. <laughs> and then when I realized, oh no, she's like drunk enough that she's not going to be outbid. Then I was like, please, please stop bidding against my wife. Could you come on <laughs> So she ended up getting us a, a, a three-day weekend at uh, at the one and only Palmia, and the the GM of the one and only Palmia, Peter Bowling, was in the audience. And of course, I immediately started going. Uh, By the way, Mr. Bowling, you know, if you want to upgrade, <laughs> it's totally up to you. You know, I would never call you out in front of all these people. And certainly, <laughs> if you don't upgrade us, it won't come up next year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, who knows when I get there what we're going to be walking into. Yeah, you might not have a room at all. Wow. <laughs> God, my life Dude. sucks dick. Dude, I got to tell you, this, this place, uh, these places are so dialed in. There's three, there's three so places in Cabo that are, we've, we've stayed through these uh, guys. And, and, and like the one and only Palmia. So we had our first date there 10 years ago. And there was a sommelier at this restaurant called Agua. And... Uh, and we saw this guy maybe two or three years after our first date. And uh, he remembered us, right? Because uh, my wife's like super chatty cat. So um, I go, uh, Manuel, do you, I don't know if you'll remember us, but we, we, we sat uh, in Agua. And he goes, um, I remember you sat at table 31 and you drank a, and like, he remembered the white wine my wife drank at dinner almost three years earlier. That floored me. I was like, this dude is like Rain Man, you know? <laughs> he had to carry the garbage bag full of all the empty bottles. <laughs> <laughs> and believe me, it was the first date. There were a lot of empty bottles, you know what I mean? That's really impressive. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it was amazing. It was, uh, and then what like, what happened to oh. him that night? Like, like, that's what we don't know. Is like, that was also the night that something horrible happened to him. Like, right. he's like, yeah. he's like, he's like, 
Yes, this was also <laughs> the night that my wife was murdered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right before my eyes. <laughs> Enjoy <laughs> your evening. <laughs> actually murdered his family, yeah. Now, uh, there was another place that we stayed called uh, Las Ventanas, and they have uh, an office called the Romance Department, right? And uh, so I, my wife and I were down there, uh, probably, I guess it would have been a couple of years ago, and um, uh, I, we, we had this villa that had a little rooftop patio, and I decided that I, we were going to renew our vows, right? So I, I, had, uh, I called the romance department, and I said, hey, could you get me, like, a, you know, a guitarist and, and, uh, and put some flowers and some champagne romance. up there and stuff like that? Yeah, it's crazy, right? <laughs> Literally, it's like a, it's a sign out in front of it that says romance department. So, um, th- you know, look it's one thing you ask them to book you like a, you know, a guitarist and get some flowers and champagne. That's pretty generic. But, uh, so they, we, they walked us, uh, we, we walked up there and, uh, and the guitarist was waiting for us and we renewed our vows. And then we went out to dinner by the time we got home from dinner. So you're talking about two and a half hours, right? They had, a photographer, because we were on a rooftop patio, they had a photographer with a telephoto lens take a photo of us, and it was blown up and framed in our room by the time we got back. It's <laughs> nice. This is the kind of stuff that would happen to you on a vacation spot, like two scenes before you find out you're going to be hunted. Yes, like, <laughs> this, this is like the level of building you up, and yet you think this picture's for you. Nay, nay, right. this goes in the private foyer with all yeah. the others. You know, like <laughs> it's, this is like the scene in the trailer. This would be the scene right before. It's just the POV of my wife <laughs> yeah. through the through the woods. You know, <laughs> yeah, Blair Witch style footage of just branches and leaves in her face and her screaming. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, that was, that really impressed me. Like, I was like, man, you guys blew up this picture and framed it. Oh, and, uh, they had, uh, a hot bath waiting for us with rose petals leading and candles. So, so I, this is the way I'm trying to like back time it in my head. Like, cause it was a piping hot bath. So I'm like, so they <laughs> basically had to. Because they made the reservations for us at for dinner. Was hiding so, under the sink. Yeah. Well, they had to basically say to <laughs> the. Know. This is the only way that it could have been done. They had to say to the restaurant, "Call us the moment they pay their bill, so that during their twenty-minute cab ride was- home, we have the time to draw a bath and have it waiting, so that it's hot." Like it had to be coordinated. It was just that was the kind of thing to me where I was like, "Oh." Well done. You know what I mean? That, that, how do you do that? You know? It'd be like Very a 30 impressive. minute, one of those Scorsese shots where it doesn't stop and everybody's like handing stuff. And, yeah. and you realize like five minutes in, you're like, God damn, like this hasn't stopped in five yeah. minutes. It's yeah. hard. That's no edits. Like, no edits, just a, a streamlined thing. I don't know if I'd be comfortable getting in a pre drawn bath in no, Mexico. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I, I'm too mistrusting. I'm too distrustful. Too. Mistrustful. Uh, it, it just wouldn't happen. They're like, hey, I've got a big piping hot vat of a liquid I'd like you to hop into <laughs> in, in a foreign country. And I was like, well, I wasn't right. even here when you prepared that vat. The, the what guy if who drew sulfuric acid? The guy yeah. who drew the bath for you has just spent all day What if El Chapo around. is yeah. in the closet yeah. fucking watching? <laughs> fucking uh, watching, waiting on you to you, hop you into your the, sulfuric There's the bath. Colombian mecti- necktie, and then there's the Cabo bath. Those are the two different <laughs> ways. That and it's they- not like this was some, like, you know, masseuse who came in and gently drew it. This was a guy who just got back from waiting in line at Kinko's and is furious, sprints up there, desperately trying to get it. You know, I, he, he'll spit in it. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you, man, on a night like that, when when you have an experience like that, you're like, you look at your wife, you're like, if I don't get laid tonight, I got no, there's I can't right. spade higher than this. You You've know seen what I mean? my like, A game. I bet, not, not, not that you ever would, but I guarantee if you call that romance department and explain that you needed you needed another person sent up, they could yep. probably make that happen as well. You could be like, yeah. I need a young lady sent up. Sure. 
Chop, chop, some program. gingerbread. Let's make it happen. Yeah. I just, they, yeah. They have a plan B. <clears throat> if all of the romance department fails, they have an built in insurance policy. They send yeah. a new broad. You, you, you call the romance department. Like, romance too, I really get a kick out of that. Yeah. All this crap, and I still haven't gotten laid. Romance, what you got? You know, send, yeah, no send something up yeah. some chocolates, some girls, yeah. whatever. The, uh, it seems the, like it, it would almost. Uh, in Mexico, a manual release is pronounced Manuel release, just so you know. Ah. A manual release, a little more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but you get company, so there's that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For the exchange rate, though, it's worth it. 